It is time for the case of the broken layer three VPN. So last we left, R1 could actually do an extended ping between 10.100.100.1 and 10.100.100.2. And we followed all the labels throughout. Now obviously I have done something where it is now broken so that we can learn a little bit better. So let's go ahead and go over to here and go to R1 and we're going to do a ping uh, to 10.100.100.2. We're going to source it from 10.100.100.1. Now it's not going to work. Now I will already tell you I did not do anything between R1 and Charlie 6 or between Charlie 17 and R2. What I did was I screwed up with the labels somewhere in the middle. The label swapping is broken. So let's find that. If I go into Charlie 6, I didn't tear down the BGP peer connection. So let's, but let's go ahead and check. So let's go into Charlie 6 and we'll do a show IP BGP VPN V4 all summary. And what we see is that I do have a VPN V4 connection with Charlie 17. And if we actually do this and we look for 10.100.100.2, we actually see 10.100.100.2 over in Charlie 6. And in fact, we still see label 20. Now, what we also did before was I had that other nice little command, which was show IP Ceph VRF customer A 10.100.100.2 detail. And this looks a lot similar as well. Remember, inner label was 20, outer label was 23. So from that perspective, what's actually going to happen is Charlie 6, when it gets the ping, that failed, is going to go ahead and put inner label 20, as I said via BGP VPN before, and outer label 23. And it's going to go ahead and send that out, as we saw from the show IP Ceph in Charlie 6. So now we're going to go ahead and go over to Charlie 7. So if we go over to Charlie 7, and we look for what am I supposed to do? What am I, Charlie 7, supposed to do if label 23 comes in? So show MPLS forwarding. Now remember before we actually were supposed to swap labels because we're in the middle. So Charlie 7 before was supposed to swap the 23 for the 29. But now the instructions that Charlie is getting is if something comes in with a label of 23, it is supposed to send it out gigabit 003, which as we see is right here heading towards Charlie 16, but we're supposed to remove the labels. So what we're saying we're supposed to do is we're supposed to actually remove the labels and send it out. We're supposed to do this. This is what Charlie 7 is doing. It is removing the labels and it is sending it out. Now, in the previous YouTube slash blog, what we actually did was we removed the labels, although we didn't really have much to remove, between Charlie 17 and R2. And I told you Charlie 17 noticed that it actually was not even supposed to be doing any MPLS there. Had no MPLS neighbor there. It was getting no labels. I'm supposed to remove labels and send it out. So, okay, let's go look at Charlie 7 and see whether or not I was evil and remove the MPLS. So if we do a show run interface gigabit 003, no MPLS IP is on there. The other thing that we notice is in our forwarding table, the two prefixes that I'm getting from OSPF in our interior gateway protocol from Charlie 16, which is over this way um, with Charlie 7, um, are both having no labels. The only labels that I'm being told about actually are the ones from Charlie 6. But I have MPLS, so if we look show MPLS uh, interface, and if we see 002, which is towards Charlie 6, looks a lot similar to 003. 
nothing exciting there. So, okay, well, do we have a neighbor? Show MPLS LDP, and let's look for neighbor. Okay, so Charlie 7 only has one MPLS LDP neighbor, and that's between Charlie 6 and Charlie 7. So there is no MPLS LDP neighbor between Charlie uh, 7 and Charlie 16. So let's go check Charlie 16. Did I just remove the MPLS interface over on Charlie 16 so that the MPLS LDP neighbor would not come up between Charlie 7 and Charlie 16? So if we actually come over here to Charlie 7 and we do a show IP, so IPS is one of my aliases, and it's a show IP interface exclude admin, which means it'll exclude things that are admin down. I use this to find things really quickly. And if you recall correctly, as opposed to that, if you recall correctly, um, we're looking for Charlie 7 to Charlie 16. So that would be 10.7.16. So let's go over to Charlie 16 and 10.7.16, that is gigabit 003. So let's do a show MPLS interface. Okay, so gigabit 003 does actually have MPLS on it. So show run interface gigabit 003. So now what? So what I'm telling you is on Charlie 7, I do have MPLS IP on. On Charlie 16, I do have MPLS IP on, just like I do between Charlie 6 and Charlie 7. So why isn't the LDP neighbor coming up? This is actually the blog that I really wanted to make and the YouTube I wanted to make. The other one was just to get you ready for this one. There is something that is extremely common that people don't know about or think about to that layer. When EIGRP or OSPF come up, they hello and then they just come up local to that link. That is not the case with LDP. Let's look at the exact same sniffer trace that I had up before. This was the sniffer trace that was a connection between Charlie 6 and Charlie 7. Now, if you look here, this is Charlie 6 saying, hello, LDP, hello. This is Charlie 7 saying, hello, LDP, hello. Here's the interesting thing. When they actually pass information between each other, when I looked at line 59 before and showed you what was in line 59, did you notice that the IP address has changed? What actually happens is when Charlie 6 sends the hello message, inside of the hello message it actually sends who he is and I say that I am 10.100.100.6 this is my MPLS LDP router ID this will be the IP address that I will make all my MPLS LDP neighbors with we are actually having a TCP connection how do I know that? Look, right here. This is a notification message. In fact, let's go right down to 59 where we were before. In the previous uh, YouTube and blog, line 59 was Charlie 7 telling Charlie 6 about the label for 10.100.100.17. But did you notice something? TCP. Transmission Control Protocol, port 646. Port 646 is actually the port for MPLS LDP neighbors. If I actually go over to Charlie 6 and I do a show TCP brief, and this right here with the 646 is the MPLS LDP connection between Charlie 6 and Charlie 7. In fact, when we do MPLS LDP neighbor, 
you'll actually see this right here. TCP connection. Which means that I can actually have router 7 and router 16 with MPLS IP on it and thinking it's trying to do MPLS IP and I'm telling you all it's doing is just LDP hellos. Why? Let's go to Charlie 7. Show MPLS LDP discovery. So what we actually see, and this is a beautiful command, I absolutely love it and I use it all the time. So on Charlie 7's connection over to Charlie 16, transmit means that I, Charlie 7, do have MPLS IP configured on that interface. I am transmitting hellos. Receive means that my neighbor on gigabit 003 is sending me LDP hellos as well. I am receiving LDP hellos. Inside of that link local LDP hello, I am actually getting in there from Charlie 16 that its MPLS LDP connection is 10.100.100.16. And I'm showing you I have no route there. Why do I have no route there? Because I removed OSPF from being advertised on Charlie 16. I got rid of it. Let's fix it. Let's go to config T, interface loopback zero, and we'll go ahead and be efficient. And I'm going to advertise 10.100.100.16 again. Now as soon as I do that, Charlie 7 will now know how to get to 10, the loopback address. And we actually have our connection. And now, show TCP brief. Charlie 7 has its MPLS LDP peer between Charlie 7 and Charlie 6, which it did before, but it now also has its MPLS LDP peer between Charlie 7 and Charlie 16. So now if we do a show MPLS LDP neighbors, we will see that we actually have two TCP connections, one between Charlie 6 and Charlie 7, and between Charlie 16 and Charlie 7. Now if we actually look now and do is show MPLS forwarding, now what are we supposed to do with 23? Now we're supposed to go ahead and send it out and go to 29. So now that whole section of no labels is gone. And now that works. So always remember Show MPLS LDP discovery. Have a great day. Hope you had fun lab with fish. See you.